So the key idea in this trial was to see if we could find differences in the way that skunk and hash affect brain activity. And Professor David Nutt, you have actually made a significant breakthrough right now, a big one. Yes, yeah, so we're using this technology called MRI imaging, which allows us to look into the brain and see which parts of the brain work in unison. And one of the most remarkable things we found in this study is that a particular circuit in the brain called the salience network is disrupted, but only under skunk, not under hash. Hash is like placebo, but under skunk, the salience network, the network that actually makes you care about things, makes you get up and do things, gives you motivation, this network which is here, mm -hmm. the anterior cingulate cortex leading through to the other side of the brain on both sides, this key network for focusing att your, your desire to do things is less connected under skunk. And so that's a very interesting finding. Let's see then the results from the brain scanner in the trial. When people were on the placebo, their salience network lit up in exactly the way we expect. With lots of activity as the different bits of the brain talk to each other efficiently. When they smoked hash, the activity was almost exactly the same. But the extraordinary finding was that when they smoked skunk, the salience network was significantly disrupted. It's the first time anyone has ever seen this result. And this really is truly a remarkable new discovery. We've had a look at Jenny Bond's brain. Now let's have a look at Matthew Paris. So here we're going to see again two MRI scans. And this is a very, very exciting concept. The salience network, as Professor Nutt explained, really looks at all the different inputs coming into the brain and prioritises them, decides which are more important, which need dealing with now and which can be put to one side for later. So here's Matthew Paris on placebo. He's not taken anything. His salience network is lit up brightly. It's coordinating all these different inputs. He's making decisions. He's motivated. Over here on this side is Matthew Paris on skunk. And you can see that there's a considerable quietening down of the same frontal area of the brain. This is the front, this is the back, and it's a slice through this way. You could possibly argue that Matthew Paris on skunk is much, much less motivated. Well, Val, David, uh, why is this so important? I think it's very important because there's lots of anecdotes about people, especially who smoke in the daytime, finding it hard on cannabis to, to get going, to be motivated, to go off and do other things. David? Well, that's right. I think what we're seeing here is the first evidence in the brain that could underpin this amotivational state. But it's only with skunk. It's not with hash. Mm. And that could be crucially important in determining the safety of the different drugs. That's profound.